Click the link now to subscribe. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa bismillahir rahmanir raheem atiya Allah atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and there was a reminder for myself an abdukul ajeezu da'ifu miskinu zalimu jahal and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Alhamdulillah for the blessed month of Rabbil Awal and the third lunar month that the reality of, of three and that Allah dress us and bless us from a life in service to the Sultanat. Mm -hmm. That we are stamped as a part of that kingdom that Allah gave everyone a stamp of one and eight and some variations in that stamping. But majority 90% of humanity is stamped with one and eight on their hand, eight and one. And that our life is to be from the eight and that eight uphold the throne on Yawmul Mashar and they hold the one king. Our life is to be from that reality of the, the eight that a life of service to the kingdom of Allah and to his authorized Sultan al Nasirah Sayyidina Muhammad al Mustafa Our life is based on that magnificent status, the reality it gives the fruit and the flavor of our existence. In this third month we open the app, the Muhammadan way app. Google Play and on the iTunes App Store. You go to the months and I think on the app now every month that we're in it'll be right there on the face. You click on the month Rabbil Awal, you go to the general, the understanding of the tajalli of the month in this ship of marifa that only Allah like a gondola they're on a course on Hablillah, they're holding tight to that rope and it goes back and forth into the heart of all realities. Whoever boards it, they jump on board and it's moving on a course. It doesn't make its own course, it's already defined, moving. It goes around, comes back, picks up people from dunya. Every day it has a new mission, people jump on, people log on, people log off. When they come on, this is moving into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> Then we take and we say, oh Rabbil Awwal. So under the nine and the sultanate of nine, the authority and the reality of nine, nine by this third month opens the secret of twenty-seven. Thabi wal ishreen by the secret and immense reality of two and seven. That all of our holy nights are 27th, Israhi wal Miraj, Laylatul Qadr because the two and the seven have to do with the gate of paradise and everything is a reflection, everything is a mirror. So when we live in a mirror two and seven on this earth then what's in the heavens? The reflection. Seven and two, right? This, it reflects in a mirror. We live in the reflection, this is not the reality, this is the reflection. The heavens is the reality, so that's seventy-two. So as a result that reality when it, it reflects onto earth is twenty-seven. And that is the entryway into the Divinely Kingdom and the Divinely Presence. The cave of all realities and the reality of seventy-two, that's why the gateway here is twenty-seven. So then this is the month of the secret of twenty-seven. We come and look and say, okay then twenty-seventh, what's the twenty-seventh name 
of Allah al-Basir. So then this has to do with the sifat of opening your Ahlul Basira, your spiritual vision that these are the tajallis and the light that will be entering into the cave. While you enter into this cave every reality is a reflection that we're asking to be dressed upon us. When we're entering into the Divine Kingdom, we're asking that when we enter into it, it reflect back onto us. So Allah says that, my kingdom come, my will will be done. If you're entering into the kingdom, that reflection must be upon your own heart. Our heart has to be the kingdom of Allah The kingdom of Allah is comprised of the immense love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why all that we do is mimicking that kingdom. How can Allah have a kingdom without the love of Prophet And how can you have a heart that doesn't have that love and that you're not overtaken by that love? And that's why Prophet described to Sayyidina Umar, you have to love me more than you love yourself, more than you love your pension and your practice and your money and your retirement and all the things that you want to do. The love of Sayyidina Muhammad is supreme, it's the flavour and the reality of our life. Anyone running towards that reality, being dressed by that reality, blessed by that reality, Allah will make all of dunya to run after them because you're running after what Allah loves, Allah make dunya to throw flowers for you and make your, your way towards Allah with rose petals. But anyone running after dunya and leaving Allah, Allah don't throw roses for you. <laughs> Something else will come. The dunya throws thorns at you because it's teaching us, why are you running towards us? Run towards the Creator. And then dunya becomes hard and punishing for the believer. So then the teaching us this direction and this love, this way resolves every difficulty. Financial difficulty, spiritual difficulty, mental difficulty, physical difficulty. When we run in the correct direction in our life and our focus is into that cave, into that love. Then we say, Sifat al-Basir that Allah Ya Rabbi going to dress me, I'm going to dress your heart from a light that will make you to be from Ahlul Basira. Whether it's this year, next year, following year, stay this course, do these practices, these lights are opening into the heart of the believer. Then the name of Sayyidina Muhammad from Dalai Khirat, the 27th name that and they put it first, not be ihtiram but for us to understand Allah's name is always highest beyond imagination but you can't get into the lock without a key. That Sifat al-Basir is a lock, it doesn't open for anyone. It opens only by the key of Sayyidina Muhammad So the name of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Mudathir, the one who shows patience, patience in the face of all tyranny. Sabr, this beatific name because we said this is the path of Ashab al-Kaf. So you, you follow along in your course that we started with Muharram. And, and leaving every difficulty, making our hijra from bad to good, moving into the cave. Oh, the cave then be example, every type of rope going to be thrown at you. You don't bark back, you don't say nothing, you don't type anything. Now today talking is your fingers. Don't, don't say, oh I'm not going to say anything, say, I'm going to be silent and then 20, 20 different texts you're sending. <laughs> Your lips are now here, <laughs> nobody talks, nobody talks to anyone anymore, they don't even have any social skills. Talking now is considered <laughs> and that's why Allah said, we're going to seal your lips and make your hands testify. Well Allah didn't know these last days were coming, 
So we know you guys don't know how to talk anymore, by the end of humanity you won't even have probably a mouth, you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Nobody has social skills, you talk to your children, there's kids look at you like they're zombies. How are you? How, how's everything today? Nobody know how anymore ihtiram and talk. Before your parents would pow, tell uncle hello, give everybody good salams. You, you were trained on how to enter into a room and give everybody greetings. So they say, oh this is a child from a, a good teaching. Nobody talks anymore, they're just typing, typing, typing. And they think that behind the veil of their technology they can type whatever they want, Allah is warning, your fingers will be talking to me. Yawm al what will that look like? When everybody is like in those movies, sci-fi movies, your lips disappear and it's just the skin here. You won't have the ability to testify, Allah don't want to hear your mouth. All their fingers will appear talking. He was an oppressor, you don't know what he was doing, what he was typing <laughs> And they're not going to talk in our favour because they're scared of Allah's judgment too. They're going to expose everything we were typing. So means then they're teaching Mudathir the one whom is patience through all tyranny that this name of Sayyidina Muhammad is the key, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, that opened my heart for this Sifat al Basir to enter. Then I understood that the 27th Surah of Qur'an will be dressing all of creation and especially my path. So then this month will be the month in which I read Surat al Naml. And Surat al Naml is guiding this earth. And those whom are arifin means they're wishing to enter into this cave, they get their sustenance of the month from this holy surah. Read every surah you want, this is good. But this is very khususan, this is specific to our journey. We'll go into that. That surah is our dress and our power, Surah Al Naml is the reappearance of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Because this journey started in Surat Al Tawbah. Surat Tawbah is that you're going to come on this journey, sacrifice your badness. So in the middle of sacrificing you, you can't cry out and say, be kind to me shaykh. Right? You came for zabiya. can you stop the middle of the zabiya? It's going to be very painful. So this is not a, a path where you, you come and you want to go, you want to come and you go. You say, no Ya Rabbi I came to sacrifice myself, that's why no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Don't keep coming thumma ammanu thumma kafaru, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go, istiqam, have firmness. Your time to stand up and fight your devil and devils. No come, no go. So they enter, you don't know if it's this year, maybe next year that's your choice. Or the following year is your choice but this is the teaching and the understanding of these rijal whom its gatekeeper is Imam Ali Salam, sitting with the Zulfiqar and asking, come in, enter into our Baba Tawbah. And there's Baba Tawbah in Medina al Munawwara also and there's Baba Tawbah in Mecca. Because you're entering in to ask Allah's acceptance of repentance and maqfira jauka that I'm running and I'm asking to forgive, Ya Rabbi no Bismillah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Bismillah Allahu Akbar. That finish it, finish the bad character, begin your testing. Don't put a little bit and then take it out, put a little bit, that'll take 50 years to happen. Just finish the bad character and get it over with Ya Rabbi. I don't want that in the grave because in the grave there's no more time out. There's no more coffee break, there's no more you know sweat a little bit and run a little bit, come back a little bit. It's just the qabr and you're in it till it's over. Seventy thousand times more difficult. 
They know because they were in seclusion and they witnessed this azab. And they never want to see that in his full 150% feeling because it's unimaginable. Because even in the seclusion they can run to go take a shower, to get a break, to just stop what they're doing. But the qabr there is no break, it's locked door and you're in it after six feet of dirt onto you. So then Holy Qur'an is dressing them and blessing them, taking them into the kingdom of Allah and this hijab that was dressing eternally upon Sayyidina Muhammad is the hijab of kindness. This is based on 12 hijabs that dress eternally the light of Sayyidina Muhammad And that Prophet was dressed 10,000 of Allah's years under the sifat of kindness, this muhabbat and this love. And Prophet was describing that when Allah was dressing tajallis, he was sweating out of shyness his light. Means all creations were coming into existence by the nazar of Allah upon the light and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah has no time. So this 10,000 is still continuing. There is no beginning and there is no end. When we describe 10,000 of Allah's years we have no understanding what that means and they just give big numbers to say like, wow, this is very big. Because Allah's years can be 1,000 of yours or 50,000 of your years. So for 10,000 years Allah is eternally dressing the hijab of kindness upon the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and the dhikr of Allah upon this light, Subhana man hu al daim la yakhta, Subhana man hu al daim la yakhta. Glory be to the one whom I am perpetual and whom I never die. So means then the people of tafakkur understand the immensity. Why Rabbil Awwal is so immensely important? What is this tajalli of Rabbil Awwal? That Allah wants you to observe it because these are the lights of Daim. When Allah is dressing the light of Prophet from his eternal reality of da'im, la yaqta that these realities I'm dressing upon your soul, your soul is da'im, it's eternal. Your soul is la yaqta that it doesn't pass away, it doesn't end, it's samadhi, ahadi reality is beyond human comprehension. Allah's samadhi tajallis that is Allah sustains, sustains that reality. It's ahadi, it's immense uniqueness, Allah sustains that reality. And as a result of this immense dress, the dress of kindness and muhabbat is this tajalli for this month. Then imagine Mawli the Nabi from just one understanding, as soon as you sit to observe it, those tajallis are dressed upon the servant. The immensity of kindness from Allah's Divine Presence, Sifat al-Basir unto the heart and to the soul. The name of Prophet that dresses them with patience and good character so that Allah will open their heart. Because patience through difficulty is the key, otherwise just difficulty with bad character you're just a rotten person. Because every time Allah squeeze you, you throw a rock at somebody. But the beautific characters through difficulty they're sweet, they're good people. And Allah is pleased at only the amal, what are, at only the akhlaq and character. What the purpose of your prayers if you don't have good character? They pray a lot, they're hifs and they memorize a lot, they have everything. But if in a situation you become bad and, and angry and aggressive over and over and over, Allah is saying, no this is the character that must be corrected. So as a result they're being dressed by these blessings. 
They're entering into the holy surah from Surat Al Naml. And we said the journey started, no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, the Bismillah Allahu Akbar, the Ya Rabbi I'm, I'm coming to your gate, take, take away my badness. And you'll see everything in this world begins to clean you, prune you, take off the branches you didn't need, give you the sabr that you didn't think you have. And then by Surat Al-Kahf you're now entering into the cave and then they're reiterating in this cave is a lion tamer. Don't come into the cave to eat them, so every type of mushkilat comes and comes and comes and they want to test your character, patience, good character, good akhlaq and then everything that we went over in Surat Al-Kahf. Be from Ashab al kaf be patient, have good character, run from bad, run from shaitan, run towards Rahman. Then Allah even gave the adab of how to accompany them with Sayyidina Khidr salam and Nabi Musa salam and all those examples of accompanying, accompany, be patient for knowledges you don't have. Of course you'll become aggressive and angry because you don't understand, don't talk, don't ever show your level of knowledge to your shaykh. They will increase the testing because it shows immense arrogance. And you want to be trained that don't, empty your cup, empty your cup. Many times we travel shaykh Lushan would say, talk and I say, ah done, no way. I'm going to show my knowledge to the one I took it from. But you want to impress him or you want to impress the room and thinking you know something. This is a school of manners. So keep your manners, be nothing, be nothing, at all times nothing. And that was Surat Al-Kahf, now enter into Surat Al-Nam and this is the kingdom of Allah opening. The kingdom that it resides within the heart of his believer, I'm not on heaven and I'm not on earth. Good tidings for people who understood this message. The kingdom of Allah is not on heavens and not on earth, it's in the heart of his believer. Means the love of the Prophets salam, is the kingdom of Allah When you love them and respect them, you respect his kingdom. So what you see now on television with satanic kingdom, they're clearly identifying themselves. They say, if it's a prophet of God we want to curse it and say every type of bad to it because it's the kingdom of shaitan. And anybody from the kingdom of a Rahman love and respect all the prophets of Allah for they represent the Divine Kingdom on earth because Allah resides within all their hearts and their brothers, Amana Rasul, their brothers. There's no difference in, in them because Allah resides within their heart. Respect of one is respect for all. That's why the Lataif of the Qalb teaches, we need all the Prophets salam. How can you reach anything if you don't have a love for Sayyidina Isa salam? How can you reach anything if you don't have a love and respect for Sayyidina Adam salam, for Sayyidina Nuh salam, for Sayyidina Ibrahim wa Sayyidina Musa salam, Sayyidina Isa salam and Sayyidina Muhammadun salam. They have to come to complete Allah's favour upon us. So when we enter into this kingdom Allah opens in this beloved month that this mawlid and these tajallis and these realities, then Allah starts the holy surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ta Seen, Tilka Ayatul Qur'an Wal Kitabil Mubeen. This ta and this seen is immense reality. This ta is for a tahir, the purified and perfected reality from Sayyidina Taha the purified guide of Allah Ta, His Tahir purified beyond imagination, it is so pure it's the haqq of Allah 
Because any per imperfection it's not there yet, like a diamond. If it has charcoal in it, it's still a charcoal because <laughs> you're not going to buy a diamond with a big black mark in the middle. You say, that's more look like charcoal. You say, no, no, it's a precious diamond, say, mm, it's okay almost there but it has charcoal. The purified, when Allah describing, this has no impurity. This is pure for your understanding, this is Janab al-Haqq. This is the reflection of Allah's truth. Ta seen? That's the description of the cave. This is the abode of the secret, Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asrar. We are in search of this scene. Our, our life is to enter into the scene. Ya seen. That was the knowledge and the secrets. Ta seen is the secret of the purified reality that Allah is showing us that this is the fire in which Nabi Musa salam was entering in the, in the valley when he approached the fire of Allah Because the fire represents a state of purity and we'll find Ayatul Kareem in this surah. So it starts off with Allah saying, by my purified secret, where you're entering now into this cave is above the door of this cave is Taseen, by my purified secret because you don't know its reality but immensely pure and the sirr and the secret of ilmu yaqeen, ayna yaqeen, haqq yaqeen and nurul anwar wa sirat al asrar is translated that the light of every secret and the secret of every light, it's, it means everything. That everything that has a secret is based on light and every light its secret is based on this reality of Prophet Entering into this cave. And then Allah is describing that this ayah and these signs of my Qur'an you're now entering into, ayatul Qur'an, not verses. It's again dunya people write this, ayatul Qur'an is the sign of Allah's Qur'an. Ayatul min ayatullah is not the guy in Iran. Ayatullah are titles from Allah that when you look at them they are the signs of Allah walking on this earth and not a title that a shura and majlis of people get together and says, you're ayah, you're ayatullah. Ayat min ayatullah is a sign from Allah's titles that I grant to you when people look at you you're a sign of my Divinely Presence. When Allah describing ayatul Qur'an that you're entering into this cave like an immense fire. Unbelievers may see it as a fire of hell because it burns everything other than what's from its reality. How are you going to guard something beautific like an immense fire? And that's why Sayyidina Jalaluddin said, be like a moth into the flame. You're not getting past without walking through that fire. If you thought they're going to give you a shower with water, no. Everybody burns and walk through it. Take your path, take your faith and walk. And this is not an easy path. This cave, its, it's writing and its inscriptions is, is teaching to us, this is my most immense secret. These are the signs, ayatul min Qur'an, these are the signs of, of my Divinely speech is emanating now from this manzil Qur'an, this cave. You understanding ayatul min Qur'an? This is the cave of Prophet's heart, the location which Allah is speaking Holy Qur'an is emanating. This is manzil Qur'an, what are you talking about? We're not talking about a mountain somewhere. We're talking into the light of Prophet Wasallam's heart which is manzil Qur'an and what Allah is describing. 
That what you're looking at on this cave, Taseen, this is my most immense and purified sir and secret. And this is Ayatul Qur'an and this Janab, this, this individual soul, he's Kitab al Mubeen. He is my book, my clear book. Did you think there's a printed copy somewhere? Kitabullah is Prophet There's no printing shop up there. You, you think it's on a paper somewhere? <laughs> that is there a paper that can contain Allah's speech? Because Allah says, if I put it on the mountain, ghashiyah. So where is that, that speech? Where is that? Is there a paper that can contain the reality of Allah's speech? Then Allah describe my kitab in other verses, if I send my tajalli to the mountain it will be dust. But Sayyidina Muhammad firm that the only one whom can contain the Divinely speech is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why then Allah describing for the believers as you're entering in now into the Surat Al-Nam is that this is an immense purified secret. This is the fire of the Divinely Presence, the center of all realities from which every reality of Holy Qur'an is, is emanating. And what we're going to find from these immense ayahs of Holy Qur'an, Allah going to bestow upon us in this month, in this cave, Wa inna huwa Sulaiman, wa inna huwa, wa inna huwa. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna huwa, he's huwa, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And he is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna huwa, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So slaughtered, you know, nothing, no head into this reality, you're entering into the fire and Allah going to dress the believers in this holy month with the immense lights of, inna huwa bismillahir rahmanir raheem. Then I'm now going to show you that what I created and I was wanting hidden treasure, wanting to be known. I was known by Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is actually a question in what name of Allah everything was created? Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa <laughs> Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.